Hi, my name is Junior Carty and this video is the first in a series of videos which I intend to produce over the next uh, incoming weeks uh, describing a, a theory regarding an alternative model of physical reality. Now, this first video is pretty much a synopsis of the, the main conclusions which have been reached. It's a subject I've been pretty much working on all my life uh, and it's just over the last couple of years that I've came to the conclusions that I've reached. The, the theory itself um, explains which, what caused the Big Bang of our universe. The, there are profound implications uh, associated with uh, this particular model of physical reality. Uh, profound implications for the whole of humankind. But over the last six years I've, I've been trying to disprove the theory, trying to find any uh, information which would, which would um, say it just can't be correct. But after all that searching, uh, I've, I've came to the final conclusion that the, the model appears to be correct. I finally had to um, think the unthinkable uh, in order to reach the conclusions. Uh, and you'll see what I mean when I start to describe um, the, uh, the conclusions of the model. Uh, so it may take a bit of faith and part yourself at this present moment during this video uh, to take what I'm going to say, ne say next at face value uh, until such times as I release the, uh, the rest of the videos uh, which explains the theory in detail. The theory postulates that time is quantized in pulses of one Planck second and that this law is a universal constant, a cosmological constant and that matter at, this, at the Planck scale is recreated moment to moment in synchronicity with the one Planck length uh, the one Planck second pulse. The model also postulates another cosmological constant which is the fact that the natural rest state of the universe is one of complete equilibrium as in no information is being exchanged, no, mat no matter exists uh, Time and space don't exist. Uh, the model postulates four cosmological constants. Uh, I've described two of them already. The third cosmological constant is the fact that uh, the coordinates of matter are in perpetual movement. This perpetual movement uh, is created because of the universal uh, endemic existence of consciousness throughout the whole of the universe. Uh, and when I say consciousness, I mean specifically the free will consciousness obsessed by all moving living organisms which exist in this universe. Well, I should start by giving perhaps the, uh, the baseline uh, definition of a uh, working definition uh, of free will in the context of the model uh, is defined as the possession of the ability to intentionally move and change direction uh, in three dimension in the three dimensional immediate three dimensional environment uh, and to move and change direction in response to any changes in the the, the immediate three-dimensional environment is only living organisms which are capable of this manoeuvre of the possession of the ability to move, change direction in space uh, which um, separates it from inanimate matter and living organisms are continually moving in space so even whilst we're lying in bed 
um, this beat of our heart and the uh, inhalation of our lungs creates um, expansion and contraction, therefore um, changing distance with the um, surrounding 3D, therefore creating uh, events simply by lying in bed sleeping. And because uh, we're lying in bed and we're travelling at 6,000 odd miles per hour as we orbit on the surface of the Earth, <coughs> um, those expansions and contractions become become waves in space. All the movement uh, and acceleration and deceleration of all the particles in the universe <coughs> is perpetual and constant. And furthermore, it is only through the application of the free will of the particular individual living being that the, the action to movement is made, uh, uh, the action is, uh, is created <coughs> and uh, the corruption of the equilibrium um, by the, the, the living being creates an event uh, at that change in coordinate. And without the application of the free will of the living being, and you could go on to say that um, without the possession of this ability uh, to intentionally move uh, 3D space in response to changes in the environment, <coughs> uh, it's difficult to see how life would have been able to evolve at all. So the free will had to be there in the living organism to evolve into higher, uh, more intelligent species. So we can say that the, the conscious free will um, compulsion, the, the, the conscious thought becomes manifest in physical four-dimensional reality. In particular, it is the intentionality which is behind the, the movement, the, the reason as to why that movement was made However uh, minor or insignificant you may think it is, um, uh, the, 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 the mental thoughts and decisions uh, results in a physical action, whether it's um, holding a pen and writing words on a page or typing a keyboard. So it is the intentionality through your free will, the reasons why you did what you did, done what you done or whatever. Um, this is the important thing, it's the intentionality um, <clears throat> and the intentionality um, is represented in the Planck radiation as a, a frequency. Um, it's a well known fact that um, um, measuring the, the, you know, the alpha heart rate um, of people who are loving and caring, affectionate, compassionate and all the rest of it of a different frequency, um, radiation, um, alpha, alpha wave frequency than those who have a, a, a negative disposition. Your mood and emotions and the kind of person you are is reflected in a, a measurable wavelength which can be measured in, in time and space. So I'm going to explain why the wavelength frequency of your free, of your conscious free will at the moment of your death is very important. But before I explain the reasons why that is, uh, I'm going to describe an aspect of the universe uh, where you might have to apply um, a wee bit of suspension and disbelief. The, the model postulates that um, this universe in which we exist is but one a uh, single universe in an infinity of separate physical universes. The one Planck second constant applies to every universe. Um, the aspect which makes each universe different, unique and um, makes it separate from any other physical universe is the unique value which is ascribed to the Planck length. Uh, for that particular universe. Um, the Planck length, the value of the Planck length for any given universe is determined and decided by the circumstances which occurred 
leading up to the creation of the singularity, the Big Bang of our universe. Uh, and this is the same for every other uh, single universe which uh, exists uh, in the infinity of universes. Now this fact makes our own universe pretty insignificant uh, in the overall uh, structure of the universe. It exists in equilibrium within the, the infinity of universes. The concept of scale uh, or comparison of um, lengths, uh, distances, etc. Uh, in relation to the infinity of the universe makes no sense uh, when you're talking about separate uh, universes. Each universe is created, lives a life, lives a life and dies. Uh, and in between the birth and the death of a universe, stars, galaxies, planets are created and civilizations exist uh, on these planets who are comparable uh, uh, as intelligent as, as human beings. Within the infinity of planets, are we, are we going to assume that the, um, the, the societies which exist on the surface of these planets uh, would be similar to um, the, the society which is presently existing on Earth? So it would be fair to say that uh, if you want to stretch your imaginations to whatever limit you want to take it with regards to visualising such a, a planet, such a civilization, we could you, you could finally say that such a planet would be equivalent to living in paradise. And according to the laws of infinity, such planets do actually exist. Now, here is an important thing about such paradise planets. Every particle, because relatively speaking it's in constant movement, acceleration, deceleration of every other particle, every other coordinate in the universe, then we can say that every particle therefore emits Planck radiation. This concept applies to planets as a whole. Each planet, each, each celestial body has a, a, an electromagnetic, electromagnetic thumbprint of the chemicals uh, and all the, uh, chemi uh, the, bigger part the chemicals and elements uh, of which that planet uh, is made of. The Planck radiation which is emitted from any given planet uh, also includes the um, Planck radiation of any living beings who populate the surface of that planet because living beings create more uh, Planck radiation as they move through space than um, inanimate matter. So that uh, creation of events is the creation of Planck radiation of, of just living. That Planck radiation, the memory of that Planck radiation Readouts into space, uh, out in, in infinity. The particular Planck radiation of the, the living beings who populate the surface of a planet represents the collective free will consciousness of that, uh, the, the global collective free will consciousness of the civilization. Uh, so, this planet, our, our planet Earth has has a particular uh, Planck radiation uh, collective global collective consciousness which has been radiated out into space at the speed of light. But however, um, we could never in our uh, wildest dreams imagine that such collective such wavelength of our collective consciousness um, could be described as anything as other than totally fucked up, we could hardly describe Earth as being a paradise planet, far from it. Uh, and if I had the choice, uh, I would rather uh, choose to live uh, on a paradise planet than uh, on this planet at this present time.
I've already wanted to take all my friends and family with me, which is impossible. <coughs> so uh, I need to make do with what I've got, and I'm very satisfied with what I've got. But the important point here is the collective consciousness of that particular planet is radiated out and Planck radiation out into the cosmos. The model states that the uh, conscious free will of any living being represents the soul of that particular living organism. At the moment of your death, the wavelength frequency of your free will soul continues to exist in the Planck radiation which extends out to the speed of light into infinity. The state of your free will consciousness is contained in the Planck Planck wave, uh, the Planck radiation of your soul, and the wavelength frequency of your soul will resonate with the wavelength frequency of the collective consciousness of a particular planet. Both wavelengths will resonate in harmony. The consequence of this is the fact that your soul and um, the planet in question are in direct contact. So the connection between your soul and your new planet is instantaneous. It doesn't have to rely on the, the speed of light to, uh, to um, carry it through space. Your soul exists in the infinity. The resonant frequency of your soul at the moment of your death with your new physical form uh, on the planet that you've chosen to uh, next live on is the ultimate karma for the life you have just lived uh, and ultimately you you do definitely reap what you sow and uh, what you reap will be for all eternity. Uh, what I'm going to say next is truly going to stretch your um, suspension of disbelief. There is a particular action which occurs in the universe which only occurs within the living tissue of a moving, living organism. This particular event occurs nowhere else in the universe. And this event is created when a living organism intentionally moves part of its body in a direction 180 degrees opposite from the direction it was previously travelling. This again creates an event uh, in space, but this event actually uh, results in the creation of a singularity. Again, you're going to have to take the phase value. It creates another singularity because it, it moves back in time, because there is an opposite force acting on that particular coordinate. Again, I'll explain why this occurs in another video. Suffice to say, that the creation of this uh, new singularity, a new coordinate, um, represents the creation of a new physical universe. A new separate physical universe is created every time a living organism makes that physical manoeuvre in space. Because only living organisms can perform this physical manoeuvre in three-dimensional space, only living organisms can create a new universe. And this is indeed what happens. So we can say that if only living organisms can create universe, universes, that our own universe, the Big Bang of our own particular universe, was, could only have been created by a living being. And the conclusion of the theory is that this is indeed true. But when we consider the fact that every living organism is capable of creating a new universe simply by making that action, we can hardly, we can hardly say that the, the living being who created our universe uh, could be regarded as being God. This living being, to all intents and purposes, is probably an ordinary Joe or Jolene or whatever sexual uh, gender in between you want to include. Um, just an ordinary person 
who probably has no idea that they've created their universe. Um, they live on a time scale uh, relative to ours where the present size of our universe is pro probably equivalent to a couple of relative nanoseconds of, of the universe in which uh, the being who created our universe exists. It's no surprise to me that the, uh, the latest images which uh, portray the, the large scale structure of the universe um, has a, a, a gossamer like structure uh, resembling very much the, the gossamer, the, um, the, the pathways between the, the neurological pathways uh, which exist in living tissue. So, as I say, not God, uh, just an ordinary person, an ordinary living being. But, like it or not, the creator of our universe nonetheless. Now here is a revelation contained within the theory. And as a confirmed atheist, I know the effects uh, this is going to have. There is the fact that there is indeed a heaven. The definition of heaven uh, in the context in the model uh, means that you're reborn in every reincarnation on a paradise planet and your reincarnation for all eternity uh, in the cycle of reincarnation of deaths and rebirths will be on a, a paradise planet. At the moment of your death, the wavelength frequency of your conscious free will um, having existed in, on a paradise planet will be nothing more than uh, sublime. So you're pretty much guaranteed that um, the wavelength frequency of your free will in the moment of your death will again have you reincarnated on another paradise planet where you're again born, live an ideal life uh, on whatever planet you exist on uh, because the collective consciousness of a paradise planet is the same as that <coughs> which you possess at the moment of your death, there is an instant uh, resonance uh, and harmony uh, at the moment of your death with another paradise planet. So an eternity of reincarnations on separate paradise planets is the definition of heaven in respect to this model. So the conclusion is, if you wish to go to a paradise planet and therefore enter heaven at the moment of your death in this life, you have to live the sort of life which resonates with the collective consciousness of that planet. Namely, you have to be compassionate, uh, loving, uh, tolerant of all your fellow human beings. Basically, if you apply the golden rule, which is treat others just exactly you would wish to be treated yourself. It's pretty much the only rule you need to apply uh, in respect of your relationships with, in everyday life with your, your fellow human beings, no matter their skin colour, creed, religion or whatever. The most positive, uplifting aspect of this theory is that if every person had to adopt <clears throat> the law uh, regarding the way you treat your fellow human beings, uh, the change in the collective consciousness uh, and the, you know, the, the, the global population would change the, the frequency of the collective consciousness of this planet uh, and we have the, the capability, uh, if enough people had to do so, we could turn this planet into heaven on earth. Uh, but it remains, that power remains within the individual. The, the most profound conclusion is the fact that uh, the person you are now uh, and the life you're presently living uh, means that you, are, you have the responsibility of being the person in this particular life where you choose to live your life according to the golden rule with compassion love and affection and all the rest of it, uh, you have the choice 
uh, and it's up to you and nobody else. Uh, and if your teachers <coughs> or your rabbi, your priest, whoever comes up to you and says this is a load of shite, um, well, tell them to fuck off um, because it's, it's your soul uh, we're talking about here. Um, they can do whatever they like, uh, but it's up to you to choose whether you want to go to heaven at the moment of your death uh, in this life or not. The choice is up to you. Although uh, we've defined there's a, a creator of this universe who's an ordinary person and we, we can't, we, could, we couldn't describe him as a qualifying as being a god. There can be a god and that god is you because you will decide to live your life so that your soul will go to heaven when you die in this life. Go to a paradise planet, be reincarnated for all eternity on a paradise planet. And this will be you. You will be living this life. So there is no God in your life until you decide to be God for yourself. And you're doing it for yourself, you're not doing it for any other person. You're doing it for your own benefit. To be nice to people um, is, a f is far, far easier than being nasty. This frame of mind alters the alpha rhythms of your heart, the wavelength frequency, ensures it will resonate with a paradise planet. And another great uplifting thing is the fact that um, at the end of the day, the good guys go to heaven and the bad guys don't. They might not be classed as hell, but if you knew how brilliant um, heaven uh, and eternity of living in paradise planets, any soul missing out on that uh, could be construed as that soul, uh, because it doesn't exist in heaven, therefore exists in hell, because they'll exist in, uh, on planets such as this, for all eternity. I personally presently live my life according to the golden rule. Uh, treat everybody exactly the way I would like to be treated myself. Uh, as such, I know for a fact that at the moment of my death, I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. So therefore, I'm on God because I've decided. I really don't need to decide, decide because that's the kind of guy I am. Uh, I'm like that anyway, so I don't need force it on myself. My conscious free will is entirely clear because you can't hide uh, from, from your conscious free will. Your decisions and your physical actions uh, and everything else you do in your life is determined by the wavelength frequency of your free will and you can't hide from it. So in living my life the way I do uh, with compassion and, and love for everybody. <clears throat> I know I'm going to heaven. Uh, whether you want to go to heaven as well is up to you. So um, I'll either see you there or not, as the case may be. The choice is yours.